In this lecture, we're going to talk about multiplication rule in probability with the use of tree diagram. First, let's talk about what is multiplication rule. Given two different events A and B, the multiplication rule states that probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B given A. So keep in mind, probability of A and B requires for event A to happen first, followed by event B to happen. And probability of B given A implies that A has already taken place. Therefore, probability of B has to be adjusted accordingly when necessary. In this example, probability of A and probability of B given A are given to us, and we want to find probability of A and B. Using the multiplication rule, we multiply probability of A and probability of B given A, so the final answer is 0.24. Let's look at another example. What is the probability of drawing two face cards from an ordinary full deck of playing cards? So the desired event in this example is to draw two face cards. Here we have to ask ourselves, are we doing this with replacement or without replacement? In any full deck of playing cards, there are 52 cards and 12 of them are face cards, as shown here. Now let's say F1 is the event that the first card is face, and F2 is the event that the second card is face. And we're going to be using multiplication rule to find probability of drawing two face cards. So in this case, probability of F1 and F2 will be probability of F1 times probability of F2 given F1. So probability that the first card is a face card is simply 12 over 52. Now we need to calculate probability of F2 given that the first card was already face card. With replacement, probability of F2 given F1 will be still 12 over 52. However, without replacement, probability of F2 given F1 will be 11 over 51, since one of the face cards are gone and one of the total cards are gone. So, with replacement, probability of F1 and F2 will be simply 12 over 52 times 12 over 52, which reduces to 9 over 169. Now, without replacement will be probability of F1 times probability of F2 given F1, so it would be 12 over 52 times 11 over 51, and the final answer on that is 11 over 221. That brings us to independent events. Two events, A and B, are called independent events when probability of B given A is the same as probability of B, 
and probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. And one of the properties of independent events is as follows, that for any two independent events, A and B, probability of A and B will be equal to probability of A times probability of B. So basically, the outcome of the first event does not affect the probability for the outcome of the second event. In this example, we're given probability of A and probability of B, and we're also given that, that A and B are independent events, and we're supposed to find probability of A and B, and probability of A or B. Now, since A and B are independent events, probability of A and B is simply probability of A times probability of B. So once we use the given information, that probability is 0.3. Now, for probability of A or B, we will be using the addition rule, which says probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. We have all the information, we do the calculation, and probability of A or B will be 0.8. Now let's talk about dependent events. Two events, A and B, are called dependent events, which means that the probability of one event is affected by the result of an earlier event. And one of the properties of dependent events will be that for any two dependent events, probability B given A is equal to probability of A and B divided by probability of A, which is the given event. In this example, it's been reported that in Europe, 88% of all households have a TV. 55% of all households have a TV and DVR. We want to know what's the probability that the randomly selected household in Europe has a DVR given that it has a TV. So we're going to use T for the event for having a TV and D for the event that a family has a DVR. So probability of T is 0.88, and probability of T and D, based on a given information, is 0.55. And we're supposed to be finding probability of D given T, probability that the family has a DVR given that they have a TV. By using the conditional probability, which is in the dependent events, that would be probability of T and D divided by probability of D, which is the given event. Do the calculation, the answer is 0 0.625, or 62.5%. Now in this example, the probability that a freshman taking a math class is given to be 0.75, the probability of taking a math class and an English class is 0.4. We want to know what's the probability that a randomly selected freshman taking an English class given that he or she is taking a math class. So once again, we're going to use some variables. M for the event that a student is taking math and E for the event that a student is taking English. 
So probability of math is given, probability of math and English is given. Now we want to find probability that a student is taking English given that a student is already taking math. Once again, we're going to use the conditional probability, which is the result of dependent events. Use the given information and probability that a student taking English, given that a student is already taking a math class, would be 0.533. Now here comes the tree diagram, which will help us a great deal with multiplication rules. How do we use the tree diagram? Once we make the tree diagram, we make sure we write the probability of each branch. The outcome is written at the end of each branch. We multiply probabilities along the branches. And then we add the probabilities of the branches that satisfy the desired event. Let's say we want to make a tree diagram to display all outcomes when tossing a fair coin three times. The first coin could be heads. The second coin could be heads, and a third coin could also be heads. Now maybe the third coin is tails, or maybe the second coin was tails, but the third coin was heads, or a third coin was tails. Now we also need to consider maybe the first coin was tails. So tails could go with heads and another heads. And we continue this pattern until we get all possible outcomes. So we can get heads, 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 tails, 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 or any other path taken in the tree diagram. Now let's use tree diagram to display all outcomes with indicated probabilities when you toss three fair coins. Now tree diagram also can be drawn horizontally instead of going down could be branches to the right. So since this is a fair coin, each time for the branch, the probability of that to happen is one half. So as you see, we have H, H, H all the way to T, T, T. Now suppose a fair coin is tossed three times. We want to find probability of getting all tails all heads, all tails or heads, and also finding the probability of getting neither all tails nor all heads. Now using the tree diagram, probability of all tails would be the product of the probabilities along tails, tails, tails branches so it would be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 over 8. So that's the probability of getting all tails. Now similarly, probability of all heads would be going along the branches that follows heads, heads, heads. And multiplying those probabilities, we get 1 over 8.
Now we're ready to do probability of all heads or all tails. These two events are mutually exclusive, so all we need to do is find each one, which we already did, and then add them together. So the answer in this case is 1 over 4. And finally, probability of not all tails or all tails would be 1 minus probability of all heads or all tails. So doing a simple calculation and the answer for that is 3 over 4. Now let's look at ordinary full deck of playing cards which again has 52 cards and 12 of them are face cards just like this image. We want to find the probability of all outcomes selecting two face cards without replacement using tree diagram. So once again we're going to use F1 for the first card to be face cards and F2 to be the second card being a face card. And we also use F1 bar and F2 bar if those cards are not face cards. So the tree diagram will look like this. If you go along the far left path or branches, we're going to get F1, F2. That means both cards were face cards. The first card is face, the second card is not. The first card is not a face card, but the second card is. And finally, neither one of the cards are face cards. Now we're going to go ahead and put the probabilities of each event next to the branches. Remember, this problem was without replacement. Now, in order to get probability of each of these outcomes, we need to multiply those probabilities that we just displayed along each branches. So probability of F1 and F2 would be 12 over 52 times 11 over 51. And we'll continue the same thing. We use the given probabilities along each path, multiply those. And probability that neither card is a face card will be 40 over 52 times 39 over 51, which is 130 over 221. Now it's worth mentioning that if we add all these probabilities, we do get 1 as expected. The sum of all probabilities has to be equal to 1. I hope this presentation helped you understand the multiplication rule and how to use it along with the tree diagram.